Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Well, we're in the summer months already. Can't believe it. So, uh, yeah, we're into July now. Flipping heck, doesn't time drag when the uh, skies are cloudy? <laughs> Anyways, today I've got two awesome little targets to, for you to have a look at. And to be honest with you, I can't believe I've not actually featured these before on my channel. Um, I thought I had for some reason, but... Uh, I must have dreamt that one. And that is M8 and M20, the Lagoon Nebula and the Triffid Nebula. Now, there's many things uh, great about these two nebulas. One is, it's you're not going to need big, powerful equipment to uh, have a good gander at them. <laughs> because th this is something that you, you can actually see the Lagoon uh, Nebula on, uh, if, you, if the conditions are right, you've got the dark enough skies, which even with the naked eye, it's a little bit like, um, well, not quite as bright as the Orion Nebula, uh, as we can see the Orion Nebula with the naked eye. But you can just about make a little faint fuzzy patch out. So this is good news for all us with the smaller telescopes. Uh, um, we won't have any problem seeing the Lagoon Nebula. And it's also a great target to have a look at through binoculars as well, with it being quite a bright nebula. Now, here's the, uh, a, a, an amazing image of the Lagoon Nebula. The red colour that you can see, now that's due to uh, clouds of hydrogen, which are lit up by the young stars that are contained within it. Now this, this nebula is a huge thing. And when I say huge, I do mean huge. It's actually a, approximately 33 light years in diameter. Uh, quite a vast old uh, nebula hanging up there in space. And it's roughly about 4,100 light years from Earth. Now, just one degree above or north of the um, Lagoon Nebula. Now remember, one degree is just literally a pinky's width of the sky. If you hold your pinky up like that, close one eye, the distance between that side and that side of your pinky is one degree. So just one degree up from the um, Lagoon Nebula, we come to M20 which is the Triffid Nebula. Now this is another emission nebula. And the cool thing about this one, if we look at, the, if we look at this photograph here, you can see again, we've got the cooler red orange stars in the nebula. And in fact, that is the, um, that is the uh, emission nebula. And then we've also got what's called a reflection nebula just behind it. Now, the, uh, that is caused by, the, the, there's some hotter blue stars outside uh, the, the, the uh, nebula, or, or should I say behind the uh, emission nebula. And these are reflecting back off the reflection nebula, which gives it this apparent blue haze color or this apparent blue color. So you've got two, uh, two kind of, of nebulas going on in just one area of the sky. It's, it, it's, it's an amazing uh, thing to look at. Now, unfortunately, you are not going to see these amazing colours that you can see in photographs uh, because that's just exactly what they are. And some people can be a little bit disappointed the first time that they look and they find these things saying, well, it's just a, a, a little hazy patch in the sky. And that's all you are going to see in any telescope, really, unless you've got, I mean, an enormous, <laughs> enormous telescope, then you may be going to be picking up some colour. The reason being is, is, is our eyes are just not, the, the cones that are responsible for picking up light is just not sensitive enough to pick up color. Uh, the rods can, can um, get the light, they know the, the seeing light, but there's just not enough um, of it coming in to activate the color receptors in our eyes. So we just see it as a, a little ghostly hazy patch. But like I say, don't let that put you off because to say that we can see these things at all, uh, considering the distance is pretty mind-blowing in my opinion. So now you know what you're going to be looking at. Uh, where do we find this thing? Well, this one's pretty easy to find. Um, we want to be facing south. You want to be looking south uh, this time of year, basically. And you're going to be looking for the famous constellation of Sagittarius. Now, some say Sagittarius resembles a teapot. Now, admittedly, it may resemble a teapot when you've got artificial lines outlining it. But in real, realistically, when you're looking for a teapot, I don't see a teapot. Um, I more or less see the uh, top of the tea. T 
teapot, if you like, the lid of the teapot, which represents these three uh, stars here, which form a triangle. Now, these are going to form um, the perfect pointer for us to find the lagoon and the uh, Triffid Nebula. Now, once you've identified Sagittarius and you've identified the lid of the teapot, if you like, I want you to do, um, get the bottom two stars of the teapot. Now, if you were to do uh, the, the, the measuring um, system where you can measure with your hands, uh, I've done a full video on that. Um, it's worth a look and learning that system. If you're not aware of it, I'll leave a link to a description of that in, uh, in the uh, below, down here somewhere. You know where to find it. <laughs> Well, if you look at um, Sagittarius and you were to hold three fingers up, you'll find that them three fingers will just about cover, uh, will be the a, exact same distance as those two bottom stars of the lid of the teapot. Now, this is going to be roughly five degrees. Now, there's one really easy thing you've got to do now. Now, depending on the angle of the teapot, okay, or where it is, it may be, it's going to be mightly slightly look different where you are in the world. But again, what we're going to do, if you imagine a total right angle, uh, a 90 degree angle from these two stars here, and we can draw a 90 degree angle. Now, that's the line you want to follow. And the way you do it is just simply hold three fingers up like that and put your ring finger on the right hand star and your first finger on the left hand star, the bottom of the lid of the teapot, okay? Now, all we've got to do now is once you've got it there, is simply pivot 90 degrees from the angle of these two stars. Can you see where I'm going from? And as soon as you pivot 90 degrees, where your first finger is pointing in the sky, that is where you're going to find the Lagoon Nebula. Now, a quick tip of when you're doing this sighting and you star hopping this way, always a good idea to have your telescope at the side of you. There's no point in say, like I do all this measuring here and then walk around to the eyepiece here if my telescope was here. By that time, you've lost all your bearings in the sky. So once you can do a rough test run, um, of where you know where to put the finder scope, whether it's a, um, a, a magnifying finder or a red dot like this, it doesn't matter. So you can, you've got a rough idea of where that's going. Now, uh, imagine my telescope's here now, okay, and I'm looking down the telescope here. So I'm doing my measuring here at the side of the telescope. You see where I'm coming from? So now, then what you do, so, so once you've done that, made that pivot, you keep your eye firmly fixed on that point of space and then bring, don't look at your telescope, don't look at your finder scope, okay? Bring the finder scope and or the red dot, whatever, up to the eye that's got fixed, to, to the eye that you're fixing into, into space. I hope that makes sense. So you, you, it's a bit like the binocular method. Uh, whenever you're using binoculars, you stare at the object and bring the binoculars to your eyes that way. Okay, you don't look at the binoculars and bring it up that way. You're going to find targets a lot faster using this method. Well, I hope you have a lot of fun and success finding this uh, nebula. Like I say, take your time, do all the hints and tips that I've talked about here, and I'm sure you'll be successful. Well, that's about it for another video, folks. Thank you so much for watching if you've watched this far. Don't forget, guys, to hit that notification bell and subscribe, maybe, if you haven't already subscribed. Um, uh, that way, you're going to know when I do an upload. Uh, hit all notifications, uh, because my uploads are a little bit uh, up and down at the minute, and so you're not going to miss the next one that I upload. And you never know, it might be just that one you've been looking for. Well, folks, in the meantime, take good care of yourselves and I will see you on the next one. Bye for now.